In this episode, we're going to take a look at what the idea of self-sufficiency is going to look like in LAND 2.0 and the costs involved. If this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey all you splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying thanks for dropping by. First of all, long episode alert. I gotta be right up front with you. This is gonna be a deep dive, but hopefully for those that are interested in LAN 2.0 and beyond, this is gonna be some good information, okay? So it's been quite a while since I've done a LAN video. Um, it's been at least two months, okay? So during the lead up to 1.5, I was doing tons of different videos uh, aimed at helping myself and other folks get prepared for the LAN 1.5 release, okay? And it felt like after it released and we did some a little bit of coverage of, you know, staking out and, you know, the, the daily occurrence of doing your claims or whatever, it seemed like we just kind of got into a flow. There wasn't really anything new to cover on that. So I really stopped making videos. However, uh, during that lead up period, uh, one of my talking points and one of my main points was the... Um, the idea of being prepared and being able to produce enough grain and be self-sufficient in 1.5, okay? And it helped me extrapolate out and figure everything out. And whenever I went live in 1.5, I was sitting good, you know, because I had everything set up. I'm self-sufficient. I have done a little bit of manipulation here and there to earn a little bit of SPS here, a little bit more uh, research there, etc. But I'm at a good even point and I haven't really made any changes in a while. Other than that property, I just that land plot I just bought this morning. Different topic, though. But the whole idea was to be self-sufficient. So now, after the more information started coming out and the white paper portions came out for LAN 2.0, um, the idea came about, uh, Magic uh, Gathering the Magic had the idea um, that grain and food in and of itself might be a lot more limited than what we think, okay? So the basic idea is that as we're farming now, uh, any piece of land, can go ahead and farm grain if you want to. And when 2.0 goes live in the future, um, there will be this massive uh, stock of grain, okay? And then after 2.0 goes live, there are only gonna be four types of land that can produce grain, okay? And at some point thereafter, um, the stores will dwindle down and we'll have this situation where people don't have enough of the proper land to be self-sufficient, okay? Now that was, uh, in my idea with this video, is to take that whole thought process one step further and kind of, you know, keep this conversation going, right? Because if you look at how the game is built, uh, or not built, uh, it's engineered, the food, uh, what they've said is that grain is going to be a very inefficient method to feed your workers. So the whole thought process occurred to me, well, if there's four types of land that can produce food, are they evenly distributed across regions? Or just like in real life, are there portions of the map, just like in the world, where it's completely inhospitable and you can't grow grain? The, the idea was in my head, well, I wonder which way they did that. Did they average out each region so each region had a certain percentage of food producing lands or grain producing lands or the other way around? And so what I do, I went in here and I went into the map and I went into and I just took a sample of five different um, regions. Now, I started putting down and counting and individually counting. Then I soon came to the idea that it wasn't even going to be close. The latter is the true truth, okay? Um, food producing, uh, <clears throat> grain producing lands are not averaged out across regions. It's completely random. Let me give you an example, okay? We'll just take a random, um, this is uh, Lunadin, 59, okay? So what I did was I just went in to the geography, selected the four types of lands that can produce food, lake, plains, rivers, and bogs, and look, 
this particular region is almost all food producing. Uh, and this is just random, but let's go ahead and look at 25. Now you can see in this particular region, the same filters are on, but uh, a lot less than half are producing food, can produce food. Let's jump around a little bit more. Look at this region, bam. You know, uh, I, have, I wouldn't count it, but that's less than 10% of the region just from looking at it, right? So you get the idea here. So that brings up the next topic. Okay, the way the, they laid out the system. So the whole idea is that more than likely, most people should be taking advantage of elemental foods. Okay, uh, they've stated in the, in the white paper and various other places when people are talking about this, the elemental foods are going to be much more efficient at feeding your workers. Okay, and they're made in such a way that they require several other resources to produce. It's not just grain. Okay, so this produces... Um, this leads to a job in and of itself. So if you just wanted to produce elemental foods, you could do that. Uh, obviously, you would want to go ahead and uh, have a farm or two along with that. Okay, so that brings up my next idea. The next idea and the overarching idea around this whole video is self-sufficiency. Okay, so in, um, in the last few weeks, uh, we've had a lot of discussion. Uh, I know Gathering the Magic's discussed this because this is one of the topics that he came up with, uh, the ideas. Um, he even discussed it with Dwayne on a very recent uh, uh, video they put out on both of their channels where they, they were um, doing an interview back and forth. Um, and it came to the conclusion, uh, his conclusion was, uh, basically the overall conclusion was, hey, we need more lands uh, so we can produce more food and be much more self-sufficient uh, whenever 2.0 comes, uh, comes live. He's made moves in the last couple weeks to buy more land plots that specifically buy food or produce grain. And even so, uh, I, I was watching a video earlier, Dwayne has as well this week, okay? So you see the direction they're going in. So let's step back. And let's take a look at being self-sufficient and what it means and the costs involved in being self-sufficient in 2.0, okay? First of all, let's take a look at this. We've all seen this. And I want to uh, look at, uh, obviously, being self-sufficient starts with having a farm right here, okay? So the first step is going to be if... Say, for instance, you want to be self-sufficient and you only had one plot of land. In most cases, I would think that would be a farm in, in my line of reasoning. Okay, Because once you stake it out, you're going to grow grain, plus you're going to grow extra grain on top of that that you don't necessarily need to feed your workers. Okay, And that grain, at the very root, if you're a person just coming in and you've got one plot of land, you can grow grain and you can sell your excess grain. I think that's the most basic way to play the land game, okay? Of course, you could argue there's a lot of other thing, ways you can play, and that's the beauty of the system, right? But we're looking at it from self-sufficiency, okay? Now, the second um, going forward, uh, if you had two plots of land, I think that the most, uh, the most interesting or most practical idea to myself being self-sufficient and having two plots of land would be having a farm and then using a plot of land for storage and um, joining a liquidity pool with your excess grain. Okay, So that is two plots of land and you're going to be able to produce, uh, depending upon how you would stake it, you would want to stake your farm much better than the storage so your liquidity pool would be much smaller but you have to average that out so you make enough grain off of that farm to actually feed your workers on the storage as well as put a little bit into the liquidity pool now and again now i'm not going to go into the liquidity pool um, discussion now provided to say if you're interested um, i would say read up on liquidity pools and know what you're going to get into however the basis of all this trading we're going to be doing in 2.0 is based upon liquidity pools so everybody has to uh, there's going to be some people are going to have to put out for liquidity pools um, for the system to work right 
And what that means at its basis is, say, for instance, I had a farm, I had storage for a liquidity pool um, for grain, and I put a thousand grain, a thousand, I matched that with a thousand DEC, those go into liquidity pool. And then I make a certain amount of DEC off of that when people buy, sell, trade. And on top of that, I make Elixir, which is right up here, okay? And uh, just keep following me because that leads me into my next uh, discussion point. Now, if you had three plots of land, I'm going to go away from the liquidity pool and I'm going to say that uh, staying self-sufficient um, and we're sticking with the food argument here, just producing food, but you could use the same example and produce a few other things here as well. But I would say two farms and one mill, okay? Because then you're going to get into the production of elemental foods, okay? So, but at this point, unless you want to buy several other plots of land, you're not going to be able to stay self-sufficient, okay? And by self-sufficient, I mean not have to buy anything off of anyone, okay? So the problem here is that whenever you go into starting to produce elemental foods, which as we mentioned earlier, are gonna be a lot more efficient at feeding the various types of workers on the different splinter lands, okay? You are talking more about more than just grain, okay? You are talking about wood, and you're gonna talk about elemental essences. Okay, so to produce elemental foods, you have to have grain, elemental essence, and wood. And whatever type of elemental essence you use, that tells you what type of food you get. Okay, so whether it's for uh, life or fire, etc. Okay, but this is like a rabbit hole we're going down. To be self sufficient with a laboratory, what do you have to have? Well, you have to be providing liquidity. You have to have a magic land producing some sort of magical resources to use. And you have to have an outpost producing essences. So I guess my point here is that after you get past one, two, three lands, it gets uh, the amount of lands that you have, properties that you have to have to stay self-sufficient grows uh, exponentially, okay? And of course, you could come in here and you could add quarry, logging camp, mine. Instead of farm, you would still need some farms to grow your grain, okay, to feed everyone. Um, you would just have to choose, depending upon the land type you have, what you're going to produce. Um, but I think it's logical to say, um, or I think it's fair to say that you could go and you could, uh, you could have a couple farms, you could have a mill, and then you could just buy the other things off of the market that you needed to produce your elemental foods. You could buy your wood, you could buy the elemental essences you need, and then you wouldn't have to worry about this up here. Okay. Now, is that being self-sufficient? Not really, but it is being self-sufficient to a certain extent that you're gonna have your mill and you're gonna be able to feed the, the workers at your mill um, to produce the elemental foods, which uh, in one example, you could go ahead and produce the elemental food that you need for uh, to run that mill. The same argument could be had if you wanted to do something else. Uh, you would still need a couple farms, but say for instance you wanted to, say for instance you had uh, several forests, you could also uh, construct a logging, couple of logging camps and then run a sawmill, but you would have to increase the amount of farms you have uh, and extrapolate out the amount of grain you need. But once again, we circle back to the fact that using grain to feed your workers is going to be very inefficient. So what does that mean as a whole to the whole ecosystem? Well, if you are a fairly large landholder and you have, I don't know, I, I would consider large, fairly large landholder holding above 20 plots of land, and you're trying to feed all of your workers with grain, you're going to be taking a large percentage of that grain out of the ecosystem that theoretically could be on the market being sold, right? So what's that do to the rest of the grain that's on the market that people are actually selling? Well, that is uh, boosting up the price of that, okay? So that 
grain is going to be much more expensive for the people that want to buy it for either feeding their workers and or uh, using for elemental foods. And in turn, that raises the price of elemental foods. We got to think of this as a common production, just like in real life. Prices of materials that go into the ingredients uh, go up, then everything goes up. I think another topic that needs to be discussed is what type of, what are you going to put on each different rarity of land? Okay. And at its basics, I think that the higher rarity lands, anything above common, are best use for um, mining or producing something. Um, first level, uh, basic ingredients. We're talking farm, quarry, logging camp, uh, mine, um, magic resource production, um, outpost. Okay, because those get the benefit of the extra percentage uh, from the higher rarities of land. Okay. Now, your second level, uh, such as mill, lithification site, sawmill, foundry, runology, possibly laboratory. I'm not sure about that one. But those, um, they don't get any benefit from putting, on, putting, it on, putting the building on a rarer land than common. They're not getting that extra percentage benefit, okay? So that's another thing. Now, let us step back for a minute. And for those who are joining me and watching videos that are relatively new to land, let's talk about the costs involved in trying to be self-sufficient, okay? And we're gonna just talk about one plot at a time, okay? So stepping back prior to land point 1.5, to get lands up and running at this point in, view, uh, point, of, point in time, these are the costs, and I may have forgotten something. If I forgot something, go ahead and point it out in the comments. Um, First of all, to get up and running, you need a land plot. You have to buy your land plot uh, on the secondary market, okay? You have that cost. And at this point in time, depending upon the rarity, it could be anywhere from $35 to um, $10,000. I haven't checked the high end uh, lately, but uh, they are, they do seem, in some regions, they do seem to be going up and holding their value. Now, the second thing is you're talking about buying cards to actually stake out the land uh, well, so you can get uh, your production points out of it, which that once again, that's a huge variable because you could spend as little as five bucks and stake out a land and get very small production out of it. Or you could spend hundreds of dollars and get a high end production out of it. Okay. Then you have to look at the possibility of uh, whether you're going to use a totem or a Rooney on the plot, which is a higher cost, but it also increases the productivity of the land. Okay, and we're just talking more money. Each level here is just more money, more money. Okay, so then you have another layer, the DEC for card staking. So the max cap is going to be 50,000, uh, considering that you put five max level cards on the land. Okay, so there's 50,000 DEC, which at peg is, is 50 US dollars. Then you have to think about the price of food and, and or time crystals to build out and or clear and build out the lot if you need to clear it, okay? And actually put uh, a structure on there so you can mine SPS, you can, <clears throat> you can mine food, or you can do research, okay? So these are the costs involved um, in getting up and running currently, 1.5. Now, flashing forward to land 2.0, whenever that happens, okay? We're gonna look at a different set of costs involved. Okay, first of all, the structures that we have on our land right now are not considered buildings and we will build new buildings. Okay, a question mark still in the air right now is what's going to happen to these old structures. Okay, are they just going to go away? Are we going to get any credit for what the money we put into building those towards the new land or towards the new buildings, etc.? Okay, so. Uh, I don't know any, uh, I haven't heard anything on that. Now, um, the first cost we're going to look at is the building cost per level. Okay, so whatever building you're going to build on your property, whether it's to harvest something or whether it's to actually make a product, it's going to have a certain cost per level. Okay, and they've stated that each building will have up to 10 levels. And as you level up, then 
the building is going to get more efficient at what it produces. Now, whether that means it produces more per hour or whether that means it produces uh, uh, items faster, I don't know yet, but they stated that it's gonna be more efficient. Now, the cost for these are, um, it was stated that it's gonna be in DEC vouchers and resources. So for instance, uh, I, the next slide, I've got a, a for instance uh, theory here. So, um, so you've got that cost, okay? And it's mounting cost because it's gonna go up as you go up in level. Um, it could stay linear. In other words, a building could be 10,000 DEC per level, meaning that at, you know, uh, at uh, level 10, then it's been 100,000 DEC to build it out. It could not be linear. linear. We don't know. Um, then you, once again, you have to consider the food and or time crystals for the build out of the building. So that's another cost. And then you have to think about monthly maintenance. Okay. And this is all not even talking about the salt impact on the cost of running your buildings. Okay. So what's all this mean? Let's take a stab at it. Okay. Okay, this is using nice round numbers. Obviously, all this is guesses because they haven't released any hard numbers. They have talked about what, um, how everything's going to run and the costs involved, but they just haven't put any specifics on it. So I'm using round numbers just for the sake of argument, okay? So let's go into this thinking that a farm level one is gonna be 10,000 DEC, which I think is fair to say since they seem to like that 10,000 round number, okay? That's 10 bucks, USD, um, you know, give or take, depending upon the fluctuation, okay? So let's also uh, take into account um, resources or materials they're also going to put in there. So let's say a farm level one is going to take 10,000 DEC, 1,000 wood, and 1,000 stone to build, okay? So you have your costs there, whatever, if you don't have um, wood and stone, you're gonna to have to buy those off the market, right? Now, this also uh, highlights the, if you had building in a box, then that's gonna come into play here. You're not gonna to have to worry about these initial costs, right? Because then you have your building, uh, that's gonna cover those costs. But let's just say for the sake of argument that you don't have building in a box. So you're going to pay 10,000 DEC, 1,000 wood, 1,000 stone. Now um, multiply that out, and if it, if everything stayed linear, then a level five farm, uh, by the time you got to level five, then it would be 50,000 DEC put into that level five building, which is roughly 50 US dollars, 5,000 wood and 5,000 stone, whatever wood and stone is going on uh, going for on the market, right? You can see how this is going along. Um, now, I will mention uh, the last line here, vouchers and salt are variables because they also mentioned that vouchers would be at play here. So in other words, you would have a set cost, but if you kicked in some vouchers, that would reduce it by a certain amount. Okay, we've seen that in the past. So I, I don't have any specifics about the, that either. Uh, so farm level one, you're gonna need food or time crystals to build it. And obviously up to level five, multiply everything by five, right? So this is a cost that you're gonna incur each time you level up a building. And we, remember, we're just talking about one plot of land here. So if you've got 12 plots like I do, multiply all this by 12, okay? Now, you don't necessarily have to level each of your buildings across your land linear uh, and keep, keep them matched. I'm sure some people will, because I probably do, but you may get into a situation where, say on your, uh, on your farming grain on a plot of land, maybe you want that maxed out and producing as much food as possible. But say for instance, you're running a mill and making elemental foods, maybe you only have that on uh, level two or three because you're only producing enough food and you can only buy enough of the other raw materials to make that and keep that busy uh, at level two or three. Okay, so there's an argument both ways. Now, let's talk about maintenance. Okay, this is another kicker. Okay, so, what they said in the white paper is small percentage, okay? And from that statement, I just made up 5%, okay? 5% of a whole can be considered a small percentage. Now, that is just pulled out of air. It's probably a different percentage, could be more, could be less, but I had to have something to take a stab at it, okay? So, 
if you're considering the maintenance of a level five, one farm or a level five farm for that matter, it's any of these are paid on a monthly basis, okay? You're looking at a level one farm, uh, using the numbers we had, your monthly maintenance would be 500 DEC, 50 wood, 50 stone, okay? Obviously, that once again might be able to be impacted by vouchers, I don't know. Level five farm with the same numbers, we're talking 2,500 DEC, 250 wood, 250 stone um, on a monthly basis. Now, are they just gonna remove the wood and stone as a percentage? Not according to the white paper, but who knows? Everything's still in flux, right? My main point here is that you're gonna to have to watch uh, for all these additive charges are going to, uh, they're gonna really add up, right? So the one other item I wanna throw in here is the mention of the maintenance scales depending upon the productivity. Okay, so the basically the idea is the more you use that building on that plot of land, the more maintenance you're going to uh, pay for. Which makes sense. You use a building, it's going to more, it's going to wear out faster. Right. Okay. But what I want to know is is that on the low side or is that on the high side? And by that, I mean, let's look at our level one farm, okay? So at 5%, paying 500 DEC per month, is that going to be the high? Is that the most I'm going to pay? Or is that going to be the low? And then how is it going to range? All details we don't have at this point in time, right? And once again, also bringing up the whole uh, salt topic, because that's once again a variable here as well that's going to affect everything, okay? How much you produce on that land, right? Uh, depending upon how much, uh, what your salt uh, salinity rate is in the region, okay? Once again, not a huge amount of details as far as facts around that other than the, system, the, the, the basics of how the system is gonna work. Okay, so I know that's probably a lot to take in, but I hope I explained it well enough. Now, where's that leave us? From the basics, I think the idea of being self-sufficient will take a lot of properties, uh, depending upon what you want to do, if you want to get outside of just producing food. Okay, Even the idea of being, quote-unquote, self-sufficient and running a mill to produce elemental food, which would involve having a magic-producing land, a, something to put into a liquidity pool, a plot of land producing something, and a plot of land to store it in, to put it in the liquidity pool. You would have to have an outpo outpost on an occupied land, which they're quite expensive. You'd have to have a plot of land for a laboratory. You'd have to have a plot of land for a mill. And then you'd have to have at least one, two, three, four. You'd have to have at least four or five plot, at least five plots to produce enough food for all of this uh, to stay self-sufficient until you got up and running and got your elemental foods producing. And then you could use that to hone down and make things run more efficiently and cycle more, maybe more grain into your liquidity pool or produce more, what have you. But there's several limiting factors here. Your outpost is only going to make so many essences. Uh, your magical production is only going to make so many magical resources, which uh, limits the amount of elemental essences you, essences you can create, which ultimately limits the amount of elemental foods you can create. So is this uh, kind of getting confusing? Not so much, but it's a very deep system. I guess overall my point is that the idea of self-sufficiency gets uh, complicated really fast and it extrapolates in the amount of uh, properties you actually need. And that's not even going into the whole idea and thought process. I haven't really even fully comprehended yet. Um, and the, uh, the question in my mind is, if you have a certain amount of people within the infrastructure using just grain to feed their their workers in a very inefficient manner and taking all that grain off the market that theoretically could be on the market driving the prices up um for everything else basically because people who do not have grain producing lands are going to have to buy the grain or have to go and buy the elemental foods that are produced by the grain this is going to force the cost of everything up now is this good 
Uh, a lot of people might be saying, yeah, man, I'm going to make more money off my land. But it could have um, a side effect, whereas some people say, well, this is getting too rich for my blood. I can't get into it because the price is just too high. So another example here. So say, for instance, you wanted to be self-sufficient. And I'm not trying to drag, drag this out. But say, for instance, maybe you want to be self-sufficient and you wanted to create metal bars. Okay. In that argument, you would need uh, a plot of land, uh, a common plot of land for the foundry. You would need a plot of land uh, or two for a mine, one or two plots of land for a mine. And then ultimately you would need enough farms to produce enough grain to feed all those people. Okay. Or if you didn't, you would have to buy off the market the elemental food or you would have to buy the grain. Right. But then you would be producing ores, which are made into metal bars, which you could turn around and sell or trade to others and buy your grain, etc. And if anybody has played uh, resource type manage management type games in the past, this is how they work, right? Um, it's not, you know, the idea of being self-sufficient is pretty far-fetched. Now, is it impossible? No. Um, how it will affect the whole infrastructure as far as if, like I said, people are using, some people are using the grain very inefficiently. I don't know. I mean, it's all going to have this um, tumbleweed type effect, right? So uh, remains to be seen. So kind of wrapping this conversation up uh, to tie a bow on it, I, I think that uh, the answer is, is it possible to be self-sufficient and feed your uh, staked uh staked cards uh, grain yeah i think it is um, but as you go up in property uh, number uh, it just multiplies out really quickly how many other plots you're going to have to have that are of the four correct types to actually um, farm grain and then you have to worry about are there even any of that type in available in my region i think ultimately the game is going to come down to uh, once people get up and running in trying to hone the efficiency of their operation, it's going to come down to element, using elemental foods. Okay, it's not going to come down to. You, in fact, I I would I would propose the idea that you're going to want to try to move away from feeding your characters just with straight grain. Okay. Now, am I saying it's not a good thing? No. Uh, you got to start somewhere, right? And I would rather have enough grain to feed my characters and not depend upon the market to start off with and be able to make movement from there and make my organization or more efficient as time goes by than have to depend upon getting up and buying off the market every day or two just to make sure I have enough to keep the operation going. Okay, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope this has been valuable for you. Please leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in this kind of content and you got any um, value out of this. I appreciate your time. Uh, hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy, and I will see you on the flip side.